subscribe and give this video a like. This is the Zelda mailbag where we read out your Zelda questions. So if you Ooh. have a question for one of us to answer, we are each going to answer two questions. Uh, we have a collection of questions mm -hmm. on our Zelda mailbag where you can go to our Discord or Patreon and leave questions and we'll collect them and put them all on our Google Doc or if you're watching live you can just leave them in the chat or super chat to get us to answer throughout the video. But Daniel, do you have a, a question picked out? This question comes from one of our Patreon supporters. And that is from Key of Time. Um, oh no, you put a dash here, Jesse. Are you no, claiming that fine. one? It's is fine. that why? Oh, it's it's fine. Good. I'm taking it. I don't care, Jesse. I'm taking it. <laughs> oh wow. The question is: Is anyone still excited for the Link's Awakening remake, or as excited for the Link's Awakening remake as I am? And do you think it opens the possibility for more Zelda games remade in the same style, such as Oracle games? So we kind of touched base on this, right? A little bit. A but little. Jesse wants it. Jesse's all about it. Jesse, he's all about it. But yeah, no, I think remakes aren't, aren't anything too, too new. I think technically this is the second remake of a Link, Link's Awakening, right? So, yeah. but it would be really cool to see um, even maybe Zelda 1 and 2 get a bit of a a glow up a remake mm -hmm. um, as well on Switch. A glow up. I love a it. glow up. Because those <laughs> games are those games are good, but a little flawed old not per mm -hmm. they're not perfect they just they haven't aged as gracefully as say the link to the past or yeah they even know, had to make the them the special editions whenever they put them yeah. on the nes classic or not the nes classic the um the switches in, yeah the NES switch online nes service, service yeah. thing they do the i forgot what they called it but they would like give you all Maybe the hearts the all the items and everything and yeah, yeah. Because the people thought Zelda they were one too hard. You start with the blue ring and a bunch of hearts and money and stuff like just. Yeah. And a par part of some of the issues with those games too is that the translations weren't as refined as they are yeah. now as well. That's all some Holly's fault. Issues. That is Holly's fault. She was <laughs> she <laughs> was not not translating old Nintendo games in the eighties. So that's yo, on listen, you. <laughs> that's on you. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> Are you even a true gamer unless you were working at Nintendo translating games in the 1980s? I don't Clearly think, not. I don't even think they translated go. the games. They just guessed on everything. Nah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, <the> jokes aside, <laughs> those like, games have some really bad translation. Yeah, they, they mm -hmm. hired someone who was just like, yeah, my neighbor was Japanese, I think. So, like, yeah. pretty sure I know how to speak it. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was the people they hired back then. No. Oh so, uh, Holly, do you have a question picked out? Yeah. Okay. So this is from uh, Row Plays Games. Right. I don't know what CN means, but Row Plays Games. Uh, do you guys think that Breath of the Wild 2 will have a large time jump? Or will it be a direct sequel with the beginning of the game starting a few days after Breath of the Wild? And by time jump, I'm not talking like a green of time, but a considerably large period of time, maybe a year or something like that. Uh, I'm thinking they probably took a little bit of time. And because they, it can't be days. Because it's not like they were just going underneath the ground all of a sudden. So there has to be reasons for you to be going under there. So if we, what would be really cool, actually, is if you start the game from right after, right? Like right after Breath of the Wild. You start, you're starting your journey. You're chilling. You're having a good time. You go to Zora's Domain. You're like, ah, hey, we're here to like, look at the Guardian. And all of a sudden, you start to actually slowly figure out what's happening underneath the castle. And then you guys start like prepping for that and going there and figuring all that. So I, I think it'd be really cool if what they showed us in the trailer was like mid game or something. That'd be cool. You, you figure out how you get there and then, you know, it's such a large game that there's a lot to do. So yeah, I don't know. I think um, both would be awesome to be honest, but it would be cool to just literally continue it. You know, maybe have a chat with Zelda <laughs> since it's been quite some time. You know, get to know her a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> a I, little I believe more. Breath of the Wild 
And even when it was just known as Zelda Wii U, the parts they showed off were like between the beginning and the middle. Like they didn't show you the, the very middle. Or not the yeah. very middle, but the very beginning. Until the E3 where they had all the great plateau stuff. But everything mm -hmm. before that was like cutscenes and stuff from around the middle of the game. So they could be doing that for Breath of the Wild too. That'd be interesting. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Because obviously you're... It's, it feels like what we were shown was a little bit of a time gap. Yeah. Clearly, because like I said, you're like, all right, let's go to, let's go check out this guardian. Yay. We're together again. Huzzah. Mm -hmm. So it's still very kind of, it's, it's very light still because you just defeated like calamity. Like so big, ah, relief. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it'd be really cool if you got to like have that moment and that breath and just that breath. <laughs> oh, I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> but have that breath and just chill. Puns and for and days. all of a sudden, like things start going wrong or you start figuring things out. It's very like, wait, that's kind of weird. Eh, it's cool. Keep going on your little journey. <laughs> I'd be down for that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's just like Final Fantasy 15, chapter 13 all over again, where it's just like, oh, we're screwed. <laughs> Oh no! If you've, ever, if you've ever played that, it was so happy and chill, and then all of a sudden it wasn't. It was very scary, <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to play this anymore. Oh no! Sadly, yeah. I've not played that far oh. into. I am. Oh, it's I'm it's not. such a trip with the boys, and then all of a sudden it wasn't. Yeah, it, it starts out like as just I'm like a, a bachelor party road trip. Yeah, thing. for a long time, and then all of a sudden it's not, and uh, I did not want to play it. <laughs> I was very frightened. I got my fiance to play it while I watched because I was literally that scared. <laughs> I was right. like, nope. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this, Daniel? Well, I, I think we touched on it before as well, but I, I think there will be probably at least like I keep feeling like there's probably a couple years between, but it would be neat actually, you know, since you talked about like sort of mid game stuff. Um, because it's possible that this isn't the very beginning of the game, right? Um, but what if they have a little bit where you play through the story and right after and then something happens or an event happens and and then maybe Link gets hurt again <laughs> has to go into a slump. But then there's like a portion where you're playing almost like tutorial area just to get back into the swing of things. Something happens, boom, and then there's a time jump and it's like two years later and <laughs> things have gone horrible since then. <laughs> like just things have deteriorated, but I think, like, just Link and Zelda, like, looking at their character designs, I don't think it's immediate because, you know, basically they're back to how they were 100 years ago at the end of Breath of the Wild. You know, mm -hmm. Link down to just the Champion's Tunic and the Master Sword and no other gear. And, you know, they've got just their same clothes again. And then we go to this trailer where, um, you know, Link's still wearing the Champion's Tunic, but now he's got leather padding and stuff over it and different sleeves and different armor underneath it and zelda's cut her hair short and she's also got a hood and now and and slightly different clothes too and it's um it's almost like they've been they've been at this for a while and having to yeah. like patch things up while they've been out adventuring and stuff right mm -hmm. um so that implies to me that there's a time jump of like maybe a couple years or something but yeah who knows i've been wrong before It'd be so, uh, nice if there was a time jump, too, of a few years, even if it's like, OK, you've been traveling and this is what's going on, just so that mm -hmm. Hyrule has started to be rebuilt. Yeah. So you can we can we can experience that again. It, it'd yeah. be nice to be like, yay, things are getting back to normal. Everything's pretty. You can explore. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, there's a dead body under the castle. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh. Yeah. I see oh, dang body. it. But. Well, that's the thing too is that we need time for things to change, right? Because yeah. if it's like we, I, I don't know about everyone else here, but I have spent a lot of hours in Hyrule, and if it's exactly the same, it's gonna be boring. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna yeah, be exactly, boring, right? Yeah. Uh, so I would love to go back to Kakariko or Hatino Village and have them like expanded and like, yeah. new buildings yeah. and stuff, or even some of the. I don't, I don't think they're gonna make us go to the exact same. That doesn't make sense, especially like the castle. Yeah. And oh, but yeah, I don't know. From the end scene, though, at least in that little trailer, you don't see any sort of civilization. So I don't know. All the towers are gone. Yeah. 
That's true, though. Yeah, you can't see any towers or shrines, no, but they're all gone. But, I mean, they could have receded back into the ground, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because they all emerged from underground. So, and they're all upside like, down. Ganon, Ganon's gone. <laughs> Our purpose is done. Where they yeah. fly up, turn upside down, <laughs> just drop. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and there's got to be a reason why you're going under the castle too, right? Like, it's not like they would just decide to do that all of a sudden. So somebody has to be like, uh, "Hey guys, by the way," or I don't know, maybe thought. whatever, whatever hand or whatever arm is holding him down, maybe that entity hmm. or something like goes to Zelda and goes to Link and hits like. They're like, hey, y'all. <laughs> hey, there's a dead body under the castle. I think you should go investigate. <laughs> go check it out. Or what if hey. we don't see um the ancient hey, pillars anymore that are um outside Hyrule Castle? So what if those receded back in? Yeah. And I know Zelda had said in her diary that you find in Hyrule Castle, she mentions wanting to have she had looked for those before Ganon showed up, before they had emerged from the ground and couldn't find them. She's mm. like, there's no sign of these. So maybe then they retract back down. She's like, I gotta go look into this because she's mm-hmm. She's all scholarly. She's a right. smart. So yeah, there's so many. There's so many ways this could go. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's amazing. They could do they could do so much. They could be like, oh yeah, we're going to look for the divine beast. It's malfunctioning. Oh crap! <laughs> this happens instead. Everything everything ah! is going wrong. Yeah, exactly. All Who right. knows? Uh, yeah. My question comes from Yiga Karma. It says, question for Daniel. How much syrup is in an average Canadian's oh, home? No. Like five to ten <laughs> liters? Uh, far too few liters. Yeah, at least more. a liter at all times. <laughs> at Come least on. a liter, eh? Yeah, at all times. A? <laughs> yeah, go get that maple syrup up there, eh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, eh? Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, well... You just gotta sit on your Chesterfield and get your pet beaver to have a jot down to the store. <laughs> you know what I've been doing lately? I've been eating waffles with with real maple syrup, obviously, mm. and ice cream on top. Ooh, baby girl, yeah. Get some vanilla, <laughs> a scoop of vanilla ice cream on there. That sounds good. Wait, vanilla ice cream on your maple syrup? Uh, with waffle, yeah, on your waffle with oh, your maple on syrup. Your waffles, okay. Canadians with vanilla are so ice cream. wild. Okay, Jesse, they'll take vanilla. They'll take they'll take maple syrup and just put it on snow and then take a popsicle stick and they're like, good. yeah, you roll, you roll it up. Ooh, you eat that off the good. stick. It's delicious. Nice. Eat your snow covered in maple syrup off a stick. All right. In That's that a real case. Thing. In that case, Holly, do you have your final question? Sure. Give me one second. I was looking at a few. Yeah. And to everyone in the uh, chat, uh, if you have your questions, we can answer them as well. Cinnamon oh, yeah. ice cream on waffles, says Lucy. Yes. Cinnamon ice cream. I've never had cinnamon ice cream. I don't know if cream. I'm into cinnamon enough for that. Nah, but... cinnamon's not my thing. Rabbit Maples. says he wants love to see Maple. the love triangle that is Link, Zelda, and Paya. <laughs> okay. Man, people really like Paya. Yeah, she's pretty cute. Yeah, she's... she's pretty cute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Um, she's Zelda. Cr- Yo, listen, I'm trying to do the question. <laughs> <laughs> Zelda Craft fi- uh, 512 says, an- oh, another question, because they've got two. Sorry. What is the dumbest slash most unlikely prediction for Breath of the Wild you have heard? I want to, because I want to know what you guys mm. have heard. Because I haven't been, I've been so busy with Anime Expo and San Diego Comic Con mm. that I've been trying to watch as many Zelda videos and predictions and theories as much as possible. But I feel like I have missed quite a few. So I'm sure you guys have been kind of been in it more. So yeah, dumbest, most unlikely prediction. People are going to hate my answer. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> I love it. Everyone is all over it, and I really don't. I just really, every time I hear it, I'm just like, no. Cringe, the the good cringe. Ganondorf theory just. Oh, that was a good oh like, but it'd be not it just, good Ganondorf. Not like, not he good. He could be hot, but. <laughs> he could be hot, but not good. <laughs> he's not a good. Like, people think he's like, oh, Ganondorf was actually the hero and then he sealed himself to prevent. Oh, no, like, that's no. That's what no. people are saying is uh, their big theory. And they're like, he was the hero that was in the backstory and. He oh right! Went and oh, I sealed did see himself that. And and then the hand sealed him, so because he knew that he was evil secretly, but he was such a good guy. And I'm like, what? What? <laughs> I don't just, think he was no ever sense. good, but I I'm saying that the royal family might not be 
Oh, they may know, not. They perfect are. or as Probably good as both. as good as exactly. They're both yeah. they're both terrible things. People yeah. they're at a at war with each other. You know what I mean? But yeah, no, Ganon. No, he's not going to be like, uh, I'm I'm a threat to society. I'm going to lock <laughs> myself up. <laughs> yeah, that's what people are thinking. There or they're like saying that uh, Ganondorf and Calamity Ganon are the same. So the Ganondorf that's here is he was the hero and he had the master sword before linkedin i'm just all this wild stuff and I just, okay. every time i hear it i'm just like crazy <laughs> like i just need to, to to walk away and it's okay no no this is this is such pipe dream fan fiction stuff that like nintendo would Jorge never in the chat says daddy dwarf daddy dwarf <laughs> like, yeah, and, and people can project their weird hot hot <laughs> anandorf daddy rehydrated yes. issues all they want <laughs> that's one thing but for him to be like the ancient a hero good guy, good guy yeah. ganondorf that's where i draw the line <laughs> yeah i don't think that's i don't think that's the case that's very far-fetched there's yeah. he's he's never been like a good guy he's not going to be a Even good guy the closest we got was Wind Waker, where he was like, oh, my motivations were my people were in the desert and I wanted to move them to. But then at the same time, he accomplished that, took over Hyrule, left all his people in the desert still, and then still beat up a bunch of kids. So <laughs> where's up your kids. good guy down in now? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Like, he, yeah, his motives could be good for his people, but that doesn't mean what he's doing is good. Mm -hmm. And he fully didn't follow through with those good good for my people motives <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 yeah. all right so uh, mine is similar sorry. to daniel's but my stupidest theory that i've heard actually came from me and it was making fun of all of the other dumb theories so i don't know if you've seen it holly but uh some of the people that are watching may have seen the top five uh theory video that i made on uh, the story or backstory concerning Are you the talking about Tingle? Ganon corpse. Yes, so Tingle. <laughs> oh no. The corpse under the castle. That zombified thing is Tingle. What? Now here's here's the thing. Tingle <laughs> always wanted to be the hero. Mm -hmm. And he finally became the hero that we see in the map thing from the story. That everyone is like pointing at me like that's ganondorf ganondorf was the old hero no the old hero was tingle and that's why <laughs> tingle was not in breath of the wild because he sacrificed himself he was buried under the castle proof we have proof oh he he did such a great job that hyrule named an island after him oh wow yeah so the tingle I, island on the, that island. the <laughs> east of the map yeah so that 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 oh. was my stupid theory that i that i put in a thing all right <laughs> okay. it, was, it was like the, you, put, you put evidence this was supposed to be unbelievable theories i'm sorry i'm just that good you read those reviews <gasps> oh that's so funny no. So what about you, Holly? Well, what's yours? I, that's the thing. That's why I asked the question oh. because I wanted you guys. Okay, okay. <laughs> she's not. She's not with it. Too much I'm anime. Just, yeah, I've been watching too much anime. You know what I mean? Just chilling. But yeah, that's why I wanted that question because I wanted to hear you guys. <laughs> All right. Do you have oh, a, no. a second? Your final question, Daniel. Oh. Um. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. This one comes from Daniel Gamer is Bot. Tingle confirmed. Yeah, no, that sounds right. Well, cool. Matt, Matt said it, so you know it has to be true. That's true. But uh, Gamerbutt asked, do you think the Zonai, who are the mysterious barbarian tribe from Breath of the Wild that we don't actually see, just mm -hmm. Zonai, the Zonai were Twili, Twilight from Twilight Princess, or descendants of the Zonai were banished from Hyrule to the Twilight Realm, became the tw Twili Twilight. I don't know how to say this word. I think it's. I'm gonna say because it's Twilight. I think it's tw Twili Twilight. Twilight, but they're like the anyways that word. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Midna fine or tribe Twilight. Of Twilight, 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 Twili. I don't know. I feel like I it would. <sighs> 
<laughs> I'm just gonna choose one. I'm just gonna go with Tweely because it just Kay. feels more natural. Feel Twilight more natural, sounds like yeah. I trailed off and didn't finish what I was finish saying. The word. <laughs> just like, finish your word, Daniel. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the the Zonai, at least being descendants of the Tweely, or in some shape, those two being related. What That'd be cool. I think, I think yeah, because. I mean, the symbolism isn't quite the same, but mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think it needs to be, but the fact that there's so much architecture and stuff with all those very pretty designs, and I feel like the Twilight Realm was also really known for that within its architecture, it, they could be related somewhat, which would be pretty dope. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, anything Twilight Realm, I'm full. I'm like all about it. Yeah, just fair. dark That's dark fair. i'm all about it so i would and because i mean we got that crazy green hand vibe which i automatically thought of midna they just oozed that sort of vibe for me i maybe mm -hmm. that maybe they're the maybe that person's a zonai we need more representation for our zelda minorities for Zelda what? I didn't hear you. The Zelda Maybe minorities. We need more ah, Zelda representation. Zelda minorities. Yeah, the okay. 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 Yes, yeah, the I totally agree. I think it would be very... I mean, it makes sense since those ruins are all over the place. But we've yet to have any sort of visual of what they look like. So, it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. I like it. And that's or why they're, yeah, and Rabbit, that's why they disappear into the twilight. So maybe they're, yeah. they just, they just went away for a little bit because they're like, y'all are screwed. <laughs> We're give, leaving. Uh, Peace. <laughs> more of a, like an in game reason for summoning in Wolf Link as well. Yeah. Mm, I hope we can still bring Wolf Link. <laughs> yeah, that would be uh, so sad. Like if they so made Breath of the Wild 2 and it's like you're using the same engine on the same console, there's literally no reason for you not to do it. Yeah, right. I like having him there. Yeah. I don't didn't play with him enough, but on my stream lately, I've been bringing Wolf Link in, and I'm just like, he's just fun. I'm trying to sneak up on guys, and then he just like, <laughs> and he runs in. I'm just like, you bungled it, but I'm all over it, buddy. <laughs> Good all dog. Right. Final uh, question here. Wolf Link. We're, we're yes. going out on a fun question uh, from the live chat. Lucy the cutie says, "What top three meals would you eat from Breath of the Wild in real life?" <gasps> Oh my goodness, guys, I just watched a video the other day where someone cooked 73 of the meals from 73? Whoa. Breath of the Wild. I'll find you the video. It wow. was really funny. They narrowed it down to like 73 for certain reasons. Um, That's a lot and of dubious meals. Yeah, they no, they literally <laughs> cooked like all of them within like an eight hour period. It was really, really hilarious. It was That's really, a lot of cooking. Yeah, it was pretty dang funny. I mean, I'm vegetarian, so I would be going with like the mix of mushrooms and crap. <laughs> <laughs> I got some nice desserts, yeah. even though there's no way, there's no physical way Link would be able to cook that stuff in the wild. <laughs> you know, making nope. cakes and all that crap. <laughs> yeah, wait he a make minute. ice cream he for the like birds. Fruit cakes. Yeah, he's making fruit cakes. He's making flans. He's making all this stuff. It's just that making... good. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Whatever, open fire my my booty. There's no way you need you uh, need proper <laughs> baking and cooking materials so, for that. Bonus question, just because I like it. You have a question in the chat, Holly. Oh. From Amanda. Oh. And there is also someone named Begone Thoughts. So that's. Interesting. I know. I love it. <laughs> oh. Polygon. Yes, it's Polygon. Polygon oh. did that. It was oh, pretty funny. Polygon. Yeah, I watched the whole thing. But yes, Amended Day has an interesting question. Do you see it? Oh, it's the could the hand in Breath of the Wild 2 trailer be the goddess Hylia's? Yes. I don't think so because it just looked a little too creepy. <laughs> okay. You know? It looked a little too Twilight ish, the color scheme. Again, it looked a little bit more Twilight ish to me. And didn't they have like extremely long. Creepy fingernails? Yeah, creepy fingers. Yeah, I feel like it's not quite something a goddess would have, you know? Yeah. I think her manicure would be slightly more refined. It wasn't, you know, creepy old lady vibes. Or it was creepy old lady so, vibes. So I, I don't think it was the goddess. I would be happy if it was Twilight, because if we get Midna, 
in ooh, HD, ooh. which like she was in HD in Twilight Princess HD, but for I'm Breath of the really Wild, she would just have like more detail to her because yeah, just the the jewelry and everything like was very yeah, the jewelry, Twilight. That's it. Princess realm. So it yeah, it looked it looked a little bit more like not evil or sinister, but it just <laughs> didn't look like a polished hand of a goddess. Yeah, this is, you know. Saved, uh, they saved Zelda, whoever it was, so. Yeah, oh, but the goddess can appear in any form she wants. True, but I mean, if she's just chilling, trying to keep Ganondorf at bay, I don't think she'd really be bothering to transform into anything but what it really is. So, yeah. I don't know. And Midna hated, like, Midna and her people, the Twilight, I, I would say they hated Ganondorf enough to, like, use their power to, like, seal him and stuff, so. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know who it would be, but I'm, ex- I'm excited either way. I'm down for a dark darkness. It was darkness. damp holding him down. Yes. Yeah, no, it was damp, damp holding down Tingle's body. So what gamer oh, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, so, you guys Daniel, are insane. do you have any uh, oh. final, final thoughts on all of this? I see you have a, a nice, yeah. and shiny new chair there. Yes. Welcome to the club. Yes, finally. <laughs> Do you like it? I never want to leave it. That's the problem. <laughs> Good. I sit down and I'm just like, Kate, hey, here I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, no, it's it's really, it's very, very good. And especially, um, I was using a very mm, okay mm. IKEA chair for a while. Ahead. And after a podcast or a stream or something like that by the end of it like my butt would be hurting oh yeah <laughs> so totally like, totally yeah so so i haven't had that issue yet with this chair though everything i'm just like it's, it's very comfy and this little back pillow just like slides right into the my back it's so it's just very it's very comfy I'll yeah. good awesome never give you up chair so now we all have happy. we all have you and racing chairs yeah we're in the club we did our cool assembly video with Caleb. I saw, I watched. <laughs> it was a disaster. When it we was done. cute. <laughs> uh, Holly, also, uh, for E3, you've worked with the UN for like mm-hmm. two or three years now. So. Yes. Yeah, they're awesome. They let me kind of do whatever I like, which is nice. I get to run around and play games still and vlog and everything. It's kind of like the best of both worlds when it comes yeah. to uh, working with like a company. So I really like them. They've been really awesome. I've so been yeah, meaning hopefully. to ask you, Holly, yeah. You yeah. Were, when E3 was ending, mm-hmm. maybe it was on the second day. Yeah, I believe it was the second day that E3 ended. We crossed paths. Yes. Crossing the street. And you oh, were yes. vlogging. Oh, yes. Yes. Did you ever put that section in a video, or do you still have it? Yeah, I did. I would, yeah. I would like to see that from like your perspective. Mm-hmm. It's because... literally. Oh gosh, it's on my. It's YouTube. It's one of my latest videos. My E3 oh. vlog. It's close to the end. Um, it was hilarious because CJ literally was like trying to find a hot dog stand, <laughs> yell, yelling, yelling there for a hot so dog. There were so many of them. <laughs> Yo, listen, but they weren't right there right away. And then like she's yelling for a hot dog. We got her a hot dog. She was talking and some guy passes her while she's like, I'm like, hey, baby girl, you like that hot dog? <laughs> and some guy walks by and goes, nice. <laughs> like really <laughs> loud and we're all, so literally that's when like, right before I saw you guys, we're all like laughing. Oh Everyone's like, what the hell? Nice. <laughs> she shoved nice. hot dog I in her face it. while I'm like, ooh, baby girl, you like that hot dog? <laughs> Just oh my being God. idiots, and that's when I saw you guys. So that's why I was like, "Oh, that's so funny!" Oh my yeah, goodness. it was. It was good. It was really. I love CJ's not a gamer. She doesn't play video games. She's one of my modeling friends, like a playmate. We've been on several covers together and whatnot. But um, and that's the other thing about Ewan. They're so nice. She worked for them last year. They gave her a badge for like a day this year to just come say hi and whatnot. So she got to walk around with me and experience some things and whatnot. She doesn't, like I said, oh, she filmed for me. She filmed my Zelda content. So, oh, nice. Oh, I was, it was so nice having her there because I wanted to play and my friend Emily wanted to play. So having someone there who didn't want to play <laughs> 
was lovely. Actually, um, that does, that's what we need next yeah, week. Yeah, you need, you need someone that's literally just not not really about it because they're not going to constantly be like, oh, can I do that too? I have fun so filming you guys, though. So. Yeah, but that's he's true. just, there's so much content you miss when everyone is so heavily involved. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was it was a good day with her. <laughs> so, all right. So, it was funny. Uh, Daniel, yes. mm-hmm. where can people find more of you? more of daniel yeah oh, like all these people well. there was like around 80 people watching earlier they they fell in love with you they need more That's daniel awesome. where, where can they, they go to get more daniel got the wrong one um if they decided to follow me <laughs> um i you can follow me on twitter instagram twitch and youtube all at Capt Bergerson, C A P T B U R G E R S O N. I swear I know how to spell my own username. And uh, <laughs> I stream twice a week on Twitch. Um, just put out really weird videos on YouTube, either re uploads of my streams or just like just like weird stuff. So <laughs> it's uh, people are very confused by my, my last Ocarina of Time video. Um, it's like 20 minutes of just nonsense, which is the best. So it's a good time. It's a good time. <laughs> it is. So. Um, yeah, otherwise, I'm here on this podcast every single week, or you can ping me on Jesse's Discord. I'm, I am reachable there if you just want to say hi. So, One day, yes, you'll me. be too famous and need your own Discord. I don't, there's no point, because, like, you and it's Ilya all the same both people. have Discord, and, like, it's just, it's all the same group of people. Yeah. <laughs> there's no point in me. <laughs> all right. So, Aww. Holly, where can people find more from you? You can find me my Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook is all Holly T Wolf, and then my YouTube is Holly Wolf TV. I also have a second verified Instagram, which I'm actually using a lot more, Holly Wolf IRL. It was my backup. It became my verified because my cosplay one is just uh, too sexy that. It keeps getting completely shadow banned. Know, so it's, it's, it's a problem. We all if you have. want to follow me We're on there, cool. But I'm just I can't post right now. I can't like things. I can't post. So Holly Wolf IRL is also my my new Instagram. <laughs> but so, uh, yeah, so Holly T Wolf, or you could just Google me. You know, I got a website, HollyWolf.ca. I post stuff. My Twitch links straight to it, embedded into my website. Everything. So a lot of yeah. cool gardening uh, Patreon stuff as well. Too, right? I do. Yes, I have Patreon. It's just, you know, patreon.com slash hollywolf. It's, guys, it's not really, just so you're all aware, it's not, it's not, it's not PG, all right? <laughs> just, no. <laughs> it's like somewhere yeah, in just, the middle. It, it's I'm not... just putting that out there. Because <laughs> sometimes people see me on, like, more PG things, and they'll go and they'll look me up, oh, and they'll no. be like, oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes, hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> <laughs> right. On your uh, Twitch, you've been doing a lot of gardening stuff, which people yes, can see on your Instagram stories and everything else too. Yeah, I have. I've, as much as I love playing video games and I do so as much as I can, I, I also really like playing video games while I'm not streaming. Um, like I've been playing Cadence of Hyrule a lot and I love it, but I honestly, more so prefer playing games on my own time as opposed to streaming them constantly i don't know i just i want to concentrate i want to do the story properly and as much as i try to stream games I'm, i'm i stream more irl i stream more gardening i stream whatever but it's like i don't know i i like just sitting in silence (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> playing games <laughs> no i'm the same i find you streaming wise it's way easier for me to stream a game i've played like a jillion times like yeah. some older zelda games yeah then i can split my focus easier but if it's a game i've never played before i just would rather do it on my own time which is probably yeah. not great for my views but, <laughs> but I, you, it's just... you just enjoy it more though you mm-hmm. enjoy it more i feel like so many people are playing games when they just come out because they know it will get them views views and they know it's popular and it's trendy but i feel like that as a as a true gamer all right don't know about you guys i am a i am not a fake gamer girl as a true gamer 
I would rather experience it fully by myself and be fully invested in it than talking to chat <laughs> because I feel like it takes away so much of the experience. Oh, yeah. And I miss things a lot too. Sometimes I'm busy talking yeah. to the chat, and then I'm like, "Wait, what was in that treasure chest?" I was not paying attention. Yeah, ex yeah. your your so. focus is just so divided. And like I said, I would just rather play it alone <laughs> in totally. silence. And for my jillionth time playing Ocarina of Time, that is just a okay. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Like, ain't no, that's like pretty much autopilot, right? But totally. We're derailing this, Jesse. Yeah. No. Where can okay. Find uh, you. Uh, that's not important. Uh, final thing. Uh, Holly. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Where uh, you you mentioned briefly your cosplay modeling stuff. Mm -hmm. What events or conventions or whatever oh, do you have coming up that you would uh, like to promote really quick? I will be uh, at San Diego Comic Con this coming weekend. I'll be there from Thursday to Sunday. I'll have a booth um, for two hours every day. You can find that on my Twitter. It's pinned there um, and across all my social medias. But yeah, I'm going to be at San Diego Comic-Con. I'll have prints that I'm going to sign and merchandise and all that kind of stuff and cosplays and all that beautiful nice. jazz. I have another one in August, but I don't have any real, real information for that yet. I just signed my contract, so yeah. All right, if uh, any of the people watching that is also going to Comic Con. Come say hi. Yeah, go say hi. And if you're uh, watching this and you don't know who Holly is, she's really awesome. So go give her a follow. Thank she you. does a bunch of really cool stuff. She has a lot of awesome Zelda cosplay as well. Mm -hmm. Which cosplays are you planning on doing while you're there? Uh, my Cami, uh, Spider Gwen, and I'm going to hopefully be bu busting out a uh, Tomb Raider. All right. So, yeah. And mm -hmm. for everybody watching, there's still 56 of you, and it just turned midnight here. Awesome. Yes. So, I need to go to sleep. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, thank Oops. you, everyone, for watching. <laughs> Remember to head to iTunes, where you can leave a review and subscribe. You'll get the audio podcast uh, before mm -hmm. it'll upload properly on YouTube. Of course, you can watch it live, but, you live know. Live is fun. There's not too many ah. people awake at like midnight to watch us ramble about Zelda. So <laughs> anyways, uh, head over there. If you leave a review, we will read it out. Go check out Holly's stuff. Go check out Daniel's stuff. Comment below. Tell us mm -hmm. what you guys oh. think about all of this. And what you guys are interested in with uh, Breath of the Wild 2 and Link's Awakening. Thank you all for watching. Bye. 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 Hello everyone. Uh, for those who don't know, our podcast, the Highland Games Cast, is also now available on iTunes and Spotify. And as a thank you to all of the people that subscribe on iTunes and leave us amazing reviews, we have a little spot here where we give some shout outs to some of you that have left some reviews or a star rating. So if you look up the Highland Games Cast or Game Over Jesse on iTunes and leave a comment, we will give you a shout out and read your comment live. So, Daniel, what is our first review that you've picked? Yeah, well, I picked this one because it's just so, it's so nice. Um, this comes from on iTunes, Skirt Skirt unique username uh they give us five stars on itunes they said this podcast is amazing it's my go-to every time i start up breath of the wild which i'm still addicted to aren't we all i love listening and finding out new things and each one of the co-hosts are funny and have their own personality to add jesse himself is hilarious and i respect his opinions because you can tell he's passionate and has an extensive research to back up anything that he says I'm a fan and also watch the other YouTube videos, and there is a very comforting feeling when I put it on the podcast. Keep up the great work, guys. P.S. I was tempted to write the review as just, it's all right, which was Jesse's take <laughs> on everything at E3. <laughs> <laughs> right. For those who watched my vlog, I'm like, Jesse, what'd you think of this? And he's like, it was all right. So, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> Trying to contain wow. my hype. So, <laughs> thanks, so for the, thanks for the little reference there, Skirt Skirt. Yeah.
Uh, Holly, were you able to pick out one that you like? Yeah, sure. Right. Um, this one is from, I'm, I, I'm sorry if I pronounce it wrong, Julian Malensky, uh says, the best Zelda and Nintendo insight on iTunes, I'm assuming. It kind of yes. goes dot, dot, dot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Five stars. Game Over Jesse and crew have the best discussion on Zelda and all Nintendo-related material on the internet. What makes this podcast so great is the personality of each member. Each one of them are knowledgeable about the source material and have a great sense of humor. I love listening to people talking about Zelda and making me laugh. I also love the theory videos as well. Keep it up, guys. Oh, that's so nice. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and the uh, final review here comes from Frymat, who is uh, on our Discord. He says, great podcast. This podcast has the funniest group of people that are so informative about the Legend of Zelda series. Very short, very simple. Thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Beautiful. For the... <laughs> So beautiful. <laughs> For the 80 people that are still watching, congratulations on making it to the end because this is the Zelda mailbag. And comment below to let us know what type of videos you would like to see us create in the future. And if you would really like to support all of us here at the Game Over Jesse channel, please consider purchasing a Game Over Jesse t-shirt or becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash gameoverjesse, where you can receive many rewards, such as getting shoutouts, having any topic or theory that you select discussed on the podcast or made into its own video, having your question answered, joining on as a guest on the podcast, and playing with us during our Twitch live streams at twitch.tv slash gameoverjesse, and much, much more.